That is right. Avengers Endgame is now the number one film in box office history, beating out Avatar. I'm not sure by how much, but it's a big freaking deal. So cheers, everybody. We did it. We all did it. Everybody here, everyone collectively together. Yay, team. We love you. Well, Vasily did a lot of things. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Apple Podcast. Uh, pretty sure that for the most part on YouTube, you guys didn't hear that because it probably get copyrighted and all that stuff, but we don't make any it's money. it's different with podcasts. I, I heard it like it's a loophole where it's kind of like podcasts are different where you just like can't really get copyrighted. He's also paid for that through Google Play. No, I, well, I pay Google Play. Like I pay a monthly subscription, therefore, sure. Therefore, you're not I just don't know anything. if I can use it. Okay, we're not making money. No, Marvel. We we're not fucking, making any we saw money. Your movie, we're okay? broke as We've seen all fuck. your movies. Just let us have this one. Yeah, yeah. So uh, if it doesn't come up, uh, it's just the way that it is. I'm gonna portals. see. I'm gonna actually gonna see how it plays out when I play it back afterwards, you like when I'm doing it, my it editing. Doesn't do good, can't you? Um, pardon? Can you just add it like in afterwards? But it doesn't sound good through the mic. Yeah, I don't know. That might have worked. That might have not worked. But for those of you who didn't catch that, yes, Avengers Endgame is now number one at the box office. And I'm doing a preemptive title, preemptive title on this episode, and I'm calling it Victory because I believe it's a victory and it's a nice short and sweet title. So, welcome to the Victory episode. I hope everyone's doing good. With me is Vass and Anthony. Shalom. I don't know if you could say that. Hi. I realized, I didn't even know it was like an actual racial, like, not, I guess not ra- like racial, but like an actual like cultural slang until like. Of course very- it is. It's Jewish. Yeah, I didn't know that like for like the longest. Like I would really? I know like not like I just learned it, but like two years ago I learned it. Like I just always used to say that. Mm. Uh what was the other one? Oh, there was one I used to say. No. No, that wasn't it. Never mind. I was thinking of something, but it was totally something different. Hope everyone's having a great day, great week, great weekend, great all of that stuff. Uh thanks again once thanks again once again for uh tuning into the F word and affiliate of the Saskatchewan Podcast Network. I'm going to get a quick uh, quick thing, uh, our sponsorship stuff, out of Zive. Oh. Okay. Hold on. Oh. What is this? Oh. What is this? Oh, that was another email that I didn't read or see. Uh, the, show's <laughs> the show's not canceled. You have been removed. <laughs> I had a dream about that. It's not a good dream. Awkward. I was not happy with that. I was. It was like... We were the lowest on the in the entire network out of the thirty podcasts, and they just booted us out. I was Is like, that "Well, that's shit." No, I don't know. I, I don't. I doubt they rated. It's just they want people there. No, I, I have a listen, dude. I had four hundred and eighty-five people or so at my wedding. I thought that twelve were going to. Sh- I had nightmares of twelve people showing up. It was fucking bonkers. It was driving me up the wall. Honestly, I feel like once I get married, I'd honestly kind of prefer like if that would happen. You know what's funny? Not my, if you plan for. No, I guess that that's many. true. Like, the thing, <laughs> no. I, I'm weird. I hate getting praised like in big. Like when I like I had a grad barbecue, hated it. So uncomfortable, just getting praised by everyone. It's kind of like you get tired of saying like thank you because it's just like okay, this is like too much praise for me. Like I'm not like that special. Just graduated high school. I'm kind of like I'm just one of those guys who get uncomfortable when you get overly praised. I get uncomfortable just getting regularly praised. Mm-hmm. I have a very tough time with. I don't know how to handle that, and I know it's a skill that people have to learn. <laughs> How to take yep. praise mm-hmm. because I think um, it, it's either one of two ways. It feels to me that if I accept the praise as is nonchalantly in a way, then it comes You're across arrogant. as arrogant, mm-hmm. even though like I just don't know how to respond. And then the other one is if I don't respond at all, then no, wait, what's the other one? Oh, if I, if I go over the top, then it obviously makes it me look a little pathetic. I think somebody had a good... Uh, had some decent advice. I forget who told me this, but to accept praise, a lot of times just saying thank you is, is one way, but finding something that you can praise the other person with so it works mm-hmm. as a double thing, right? So if someone says congratulations for you at that grad bank, uh, uh, barbecue, sorry, then in your mind, you want to think about something for them. It's like, oh, thank you so much. You know what? I loved your suit. Or it looked like you had a really good time. Like Try to, try to reciprocate the, the thank you back. But I don't know how that works all the time. How do you guys deal with praise? I mean, you kind of laid it out yeah. now, but awkward. yeah, I'm kind of oh, thanks, yeah, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. Just thank you, and I leave it at yeah. that. The return praise kind of seems like you're trying hard, but 
Right. It's, it's accepting it is actually better because people went out of their way. Like they genuinely want to give you the praise. And say, oh, thanks. You know, that kind of stuff. And whatever you can, depending on what it is, right? Uh, mm-hmm. It's circumstantial. But mm-hmm. also it's like accepting the praise as is is always the best bet because they went out of their way to try to find something. On the other hand, is good too. But accepting it as is is usually better because people want to just like be able to get that out there. You guys keep rip- riffing, ripping, riffing for a second. I'm just going to grab you a water. Okay. 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 Well, I remember there's a story like uh, this was near the end of the year for high school. I was just working mm-hmm. out in the morning and we had tryouts for MC just for like because mm-hmm. uh, there was two teams running against each other, my like my partner and this other team. And we went the day before yeah. and like my team like killed it like we did really good. everyone like loved us yeah and i was like i think i was deadlifting or some shit and i was just out of breath and i was so out of it and like when i work out in the morning specifically yeah. like i am silent like i just <laughs> like batman mode i just like don't talk to people don't look at people just sit there headphones in and just like silent so some girl came up to me who i didn't really talk to and she's like trying to talk to me on my headphone in. and i'm like oh sorry what she's like, oh you did a really good job MC. i thought you were like really funny and i have to think like i paused for, like a solid like two seconds i'm like Oh yeah, thank you so much. It means a lot. Yeah, thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Is that a brain fart? Yeah, like I was just like, I was like, I'm so tired. She's praising me. What the fuck? What speech did I say and when? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's just awkward. It's just over like getting like a compliment's fine, but like yeah. when you have a whole like thing dedicated to you, it's like, oh, okay, this is like. I always always find sometimes I find ways to like undercut the praise and on my end to say mm-hmm. like oh yeah you did a good I'm like ah, i could have done a lot better that kind of thing mm-hmm. it's like you like say you for high school it's like yeah but i didn't get the grades i should have probably but i didn't try as hard as i should have but you know whatever mm-hmm. so if gets pissed at that she's like just accept just say thank you see that's what i'm saying most people just say just say thank you walk away they accept it's yeah. like it's almost the same thing as like you buy someone a coffee and then they have to buy you a coffee back. So then you have to buy them a coffee. It's like in, in the office. It's never going to end. When Dwight oh, yes. brought the muffins or whatever yeah. and he wanted to, or the, the bagels or something. And then Andy Bernard hit him back with something else. And there was that huge fight, that huge back and forth. It's like he opens the door for him. Then he opens the door for him. And then he yeah. hides a gift card in somewhere. Yeah. I resonate with that episode a lot every time I see that. Not to that extent, but, you know, yeah. kind of feel awkward. Um Oh, some housekeeping stuff. Oh. The Saskatchewan Podcast Network would not be possible without the support of Conexus Credit Union. I'm going to go with the number two ad read um, because I still haven't As organic as anything. possible. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm going to make this the most interesting thing you have heard. Sans the music in the background. Mm-hmm. The Saskatchewan Podcast Network. I said that wrong. Is supported by Conexus. Next time you're stuck in traffic for a while, here's some things to think about instead of why the car in front of you is going so slow or if the car behind you is trying to hitch a ride on your bumper. What if your bank was committed to working with you to achieve your goals? What if they cared enough to get to know you? What if they weren't successful unless you were? What if your financial well-being drove everything they did? Come see why things are different at Conexus. I said all the inflections wrong there. Stop by any branch to learn more about how Conexus cares. That's Conexus Credit Union, sponsor of the Saskatchewan Podcast Network, and uh, has been backing our fearless leader, Dale Richardson, in the fight to bring voices to Saskatchewan around the world. Via podcasts. Well, that's how you bring the voices. Or you just hear them in your head. Yeah. Yeah, those two. Podcasts are huge, though, man. The more and more things I listen to, the more people are saying, like, it's just such a game changer. Mm -hmm. I was listening to a psychologist who was doing uh, lectures, and he started to upload his lectures onto YouTube. And it was very early on in YouTube. And he's like, who the hell's going to watch this? And they've gotten millions and millions of views. Uh, But he said that the thing that makes podcasts and audiobooks, for instance, that much better is that you can when you're watching a video on YouTube you're watching that video and that's kind of all you want you can do because you're paying attention to it mm-hmm. if you're reading a book that's all you're doing because you want to read the book and pay attention to the book and obviously you have it in your hands or Kindle or whatever whereas a podcast or an audio book you can do things while you're getting, like I'm, I have it on at work all the time I've listened to probably almost 35 hours of psychology lectures at work because mm-hmm. you know I can just put my head down do my work and everything's good to go so um, yeah, yeah. It's a big deal. And it's growing every time. It's not one of those things that uh, I don't think is ever going to go away. Just like audiobooks have never gone away. They're just getting better and better. Mm-hmm. 
Um, but yes, so It'd be interesting to see if there'd ever be like a streaming kind of like service for a podcast where you just have them all like compiled in like one area where you can just. I feel like they already like I guess they have it in a way, but like not like Spotify or Apple Music, where they just have like an actual like almost like the Saskatchewan like, Podcast Network. Yeah, but like an actual app and shit, where you can actually just like go and like navigate like Netflix. So it's, have, it's, like, a, it's a website oh. right now, right? Right now, there's a website. Okay. And on that website, you can find other people on there okay. uh, with all the names and everything on there. So, uh, or so that, the, the people that you want to take a look at with some synopsis and stuff. Uh, and then they're rolling out. It's because it's still technically in soft launch yeah. territory. Uh, the guy that started at Dale is going around, you know, CBC and all the other, uh, you know, CTV and a bunch of news outlets. Uh, and then I forgot to mention last week I got to do one because my friend Heidi was uh, was is, is now a writer for CBC. So she, she interviewed us about here. And it was one of the best typos in the world, and I don't know if it was my fault or not, but she changed it, of course, where it said that uh, they've gotten 2,000 downloads per episode, which when I saw that, first I thought, oh, that's a mistake, but then I sat there and I was just like, god damn, that'd be awesome. <laughs> just seeing that number as, like, synon- like associated with the, just the episode in the show. But uh, no, we're, we're closing in on 2,000 downloads. Total. Mm-hmm. Total. Which is still like, we don't actually advertise this. So you got to think about that too. That's just organic honest, growth. You know what? I want to ask you something. I was looking yesterday. Um, so you know those posters that I like. I put. I create the posters mm-hmm. for the episode and I put them up on Instagram. I don't know how effective that is, but in the beginning it was like twenty to you know fifteen to twenty likes, mm-hmm. and then the last one I got four, and I don't even know if people are seeing it. And I'm I don't know if it's too many hashtags, if it's conflicting hashtags. It's just weird because we're talking like consistent for s- almost six months. Mm-hmm. of getting consistent amount of likes from a bunch of people and, and, yeah. and that. And then this last one, it's like nobody saw it. That is true because I have not seen a single post. Shut up. For, I'll go, I'm lo- now that you say it, I have not seen one for a long time. And well, I do that follow you. sucks. Well, I know you do, yeah. yeah. On so, both because I do it on my... not coming up? Apparently not. I do it on my... Uh, I don't know if it is. I see it. You have the right I converted. I converted it to um, uh, a creator account. So I might need your help with that because I don't know what to do with it. Um, that gives more insights and stuff. But at the same time, someone had even mentioned on um, on Twitter themselves that Twitter's kind of like this black hole where it's all content creators following content creators that are creating their content and they're pitching it to other content creators that may or may not be viewing their stuff. So mm-hmm. it's very hard to advertise for sure. So Instagram, though, their algorithm is so stupid because with Entertain Facts, I was dealing with this a lot. Mm-hmm. I remember that. And there is just like... Honestly, there's no way to fix it. There's no. It's all random. It's all like luck if your post will get shown. Because my friend Harsh uh, uploaded a song last night and he posted on his Instagram. Is this the rapper? Sorry. Yeah. He was on the live show the one time. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so he uh, uploaded a song late at night at like nine o'clock, and that's like a big no-no. I told him like because like there's prime time to post it's in general, which is like mm-hmm. morning, uh, lunch, or like right after work, so five ish. Yeah. So, like, nine is kind of, like, dead man hours. Like, that's when I used to post memes on my entertain facts just because, like, just, like, that late night kind of thing. Just, just to not, fill in that time. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but he posted that. And his first song, the first day, got, like, a 1,000 views, he said. Nice. And his second one now so far has, like, 300. So oh, wow. So, it's like a big drop off. And that's just, I told him this because, like, people are obviously more curious for your first song just to see if you're shitty or not because if you're high yeah, school, like, definitely. all people, like, are going to hate on you. The second one obviously won't be as, be as successful, but, like, still a big drop off just because... I know a lot of people like probably didn't see it just because of that shitty algorithm and there's just no yeah. way to fix it. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's why I, I just enjoy making the posters, mm-hmm. but it just when you look at it and you're like, shit, like it's not getting anywhere. So we just have to trust that people are saying, hey, check mm-hmm. these guys out. And I'm hoping that the, the network also helps too because well, if we're going to have like, we could like start focusing on like how to make it like more local. For sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, either, yeah, local or just finding other interesting ways of advertising it. Um, but yeah. Big news, a lot of news, a lot of shit. What came down? Comic Con wrapped Ooh, up yeah. what yesterday. Yeah. So aside from Avengers hitting number one on the same weekend as Comic Con, which I think is really fitting, mm-hmm. um, fucking Marvel came out and just threw up all over the place. DC got fucked. They went right after Marvel and like no one gave a fuck. Oh man, <laughs> I didn't it's know they had such a panel. Harper. Like, I, I didn't hear anything yeah, about no, them. I, yeah, I don't think I heard, I heard any like, news. <laughs> like, I heard, like it's not like they, I looked into it. and It wasn't like oh. awful. Like they announced some things. It's just like. 
I don't think they really announced any movies, and it just kind of fucking mm-hmm. like no one knew about it. But nothing to the planning extent that mm-hmm. Marvel did. Well, so it's like they're already. They said they already have Phase Five pretty well, much. Well, yeah, go. some of them are Phase Five. Not well, a lot Guardians of Guardians Three yeah. is Phase Five. Guardians well, 3, I mean, Black Panther Two is Phase Five. Most of these movies are 2021 that they released, mm-hmm. right? Like the last one is yeah. a 2021. Yeah. So my guess is pre-production takes about a year, year and a half, maybe two years, depending on the movie. So I wouldn't be surprised if they've got these ready to go Mm -hmm. and they've got the concepts down and now they're just like okay you know we already have the ball rolling um but yeah we've got some comic-con stuff which we'll talk about for sure uh Mm -hmm. we got um but that's actually all i have in terms of like (laughs) it's all marvel it's all no like i'm I'm just trying to think of comic-con stuff did you um before we get to that though me and bass we saw the lion king Mm -hmm. we sure did and um I'm pretty sure I'm convinced that you were totally right on that trailer, by the way. I think you were. 100%. Well, there was, th- hold on. There was one more scene before that, after he saw his father, before he went after uh, Nala, where he was on top of something and he roared, which wasn't in the original. He didn't roar, he just yelled out. I don't, I, I don't. Yell, so wait, sorry, the lion yelled out? Yeah. Is that what he did? Okay. Yeah. Anyways, he was adult. As Simba. much as a talking lion can yell out, that's what he did. He didn't roar. That was the end scene that we saw in the original trailer. Yeah. I was I was thinking of getting up in the middle of the theater and being like, hey, everybody, I have an announcement to make. But I just didn't care after the movie finished, so I didn't make that announcement. And so, I reneged uh, on my bet. The back end was you punching me in the face yep. at the very end of the movie <laughs> if I was wrong. And then the other one was me standing up and proclaiming your genius. <laughs> There's no shame doing that. You know, the guy for Halloween, when I talked about him plugging his podcast, there was no shame. No. Bit weird, but, you know, no shame. Yeah, that's true. Well, I well, mean. Well, you have to go see it together and then do it. Yeah, I could do that. <laughs> I just don't want to see it again. Um, but me and my brother, me, 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 I'm like bumbling over everything. Let's talk Lion King. Okay. Non-spoilers or spoilers? It's, it's a remake. It's a remake. It a remake. We have to go okay. right into it. We're going to go right into it because, okay. yeah, if you haven't seen The Lion King, the original, stop listening right now and go see it. Um, if you've seen it, then great. If you're worried about spoilers for a remake, then I'm sorry. We're going to do them in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Would you like to start? What I like to start, Mufasa dies. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, no. Uh, you know what? I enjoyed a good chunk of it. Mm-hmm. Like I would say as an overarc, I it was great. It was very well done. Mm-hmm. Uh, most of the actors did fit very well with their characters. Mm-hmm. Some did not. Any standouts on uh, the good? Like on, on who good, did really You know what? Good? Charles Gambino was a good Simba. He did? Yeah. The young kid as in Sian Simba did very well as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously. See, James Earl Jones kind of switched up his performance in this one. It was less resonating i would say it's mm-hmm. a little bit more softer tones in here and there and stuff well, like he's that old he was he, old when the original came out so you gotta yeah he was old when the original so you think he can get deeper more like it, it just seemed lighter there's power voice. there that's really hard to get after yeah. at that age i guess I so. so there's that too uh the actress who played sarabi mm-hmm. did very well she was also in luke cage can't remember misty knight is that uh, who no not no not misty knight the um, cotton mouth's uh, cousin Oh. She was Sarabi. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, who else? Uh, yeah, Billy Eichner did amazing as Timon. He was very good. And uh, Seth Rogen as Pumba, he did good too. I think so. Alfrey Woodard. Yeah. Yeah. So she did. I good. really liked her in season Just, one. Uh, but... Scar, as I expected, Chiwetel IG4, like he did okay, but it just didn't sit the same. Mm-hmm. Like Jeremy Irons is just like. Right away, so you did get, they ever like reveal why they didn't get him back, or is this? I I honestly think it had to do with the race thing. Honestly, I it's an African set movie. They tried to get as many African actors as they could, minus the bird, the John Oliver, the Billy Eichner, Seth, Seth Rogen, and then the Warthog, and then Amy Sedaris, who I don't know who she played in it, but she's yeah. listed in here. I, I I truly thought that because to not even get the guy give a guy a call to refuse it mm-hmm. if he himself chose not to come back that's a different story they didn't even ask the guy mm-hmm. so i honestly think they tried to keep as much of the core uh cast african-american honestly mm-hmm. um but uh they left out a lot of solid parts in the movie so i'll let you continue on so i don't take this out ball <laughs> on my end um i i'm not uh 
I don't think I've ever subscribed to the idea that a remake could kill your could ruin your childhood. I know that was a narrative no. going around for no. a lot of the remakes. Oh, this is going to ruin my childhood. I'm a huge fan of the Cinderella remake. I'm a huge fan of the Beauty and the Beast remake. Not as much as so, but I, I like them both. Yeah. Um, there was another. Oh, the Jungle Book. I really liked. Yeah. I really liked that. Um, technically, it was stunning. Yeah. Like the look mm-hmm. of this movie is unbelievable. Yeah. And when you see Jungle Book, you see that Absolutely. in there. You see that. You see a technical achievement. And this, same exact thing. The only thing that I walked away from thinking is that it lacked heart. In some uh, it, 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 moments, lacked, yeah. it lacked that, that core base heart that was in the center of the original. Uh, if anybody remembers, the original was actually competing against Pocahontas, and The Lion King was actually the B movie. So they were working on Pocahontas. That was their first. That was the one the whole team was behind. Yeah. And then Lion King was secondary, and they're like, okay, let's get our B team to work on the Lion King. And the B team ended up killing it, decimating all. Right. Um, and I don't know if, to what extent just the passion for the material is. Obviously, you can see that in any art form. Mm-hmm. I felt this one, aside from a few specific uh, voice actors, mm-hmm. um, Billy Eichner for one, yeah, and to a certain extent Seth Rogen, I just I just felt it was very empty, and I was trying to, I was trying to figure out why it felt empty, why this thing about these animals, like the cartoon translation, but why Jungle Book felt more heartfelt, even yeah. though it was also animals, and you did have the young little boy acting. Or off of everything, which yep. I felt is super important. Um, this one just felt like some celebrities that they got who can sing very well, most of them who can sing very well, obviously, just reading lines and then bringing it when the, the singing came. Um, the little kid that played Simba, mm-hmm. it just felt like he was reading his lines, but then when the singing parts came, like he I just he brought it out and he, he's a singer, did yep. really good. Um, obviously, Beyonce. Great sing, like Queen Bee, right? Yeah. Uh, you got Childish Gambino. But when they sang Can You Feel the Love Tonight, I just was hearing the two of them singing. Like there was so They're many falsettos. There was each other in a way. It was like kind a, of, yeah. yeah. There, there, was, there was a style to that that was so over the top mm-hmm. that kind of took away from everything. Because then you're like, okay, well... First of all, these real life looking animals don't have the facial expressions that the cartoons had, so that's a big thing. Yeah, uh, and then you've got these over the top singers singing when the facial, the extension of the way that these animals' faces can contort yeah. is very much limited than the cartoon, obviously. Cause again, mm-hmm. it's a cartoon. Uh, so I think there was these extremes going on, and nowhere did it fit right in the middle. Yeah. Um, you know, even when Simba was adult Simba, I rewatched a lot of the scenes after. Yeah, they got released. Yeah, and it was just Childish Gambino singing a bunch of times. At yeah. one point, he did his scream that he did in Red Bull or Red Bone, Red Bull yeah. in Red Bone, and I was like, "Oh, this is just Childish Gambino doing his thing." Mm-hmm. And it, I don't know, it, it just lacked it lacked heart. It had the technical prowess, I'll put it that way. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it just didn't it just didn't work. For a lot of it didn't have mm-hmm. the same feeling and i hadn't watched remember when i told you like i watch it like a bunch of times a year mm-hmm. uh i didn't watch it since that time specifically and a little bit before that i didn't watch it at all because i'm like i'm going in this like this is yeah what i'm gonna do um so that was my thing billy eichner was good i thought she would tell edge four was uh miscast mm-hmm. i felt that they never brought james earl jones back they should have cast she would tell as mufasa i think she yeah. tell's voice lent itself more to the Mufasa role because they're brothers, sure, Mm -hmm. but in the original they sounded vastly different and one was sounded very slithery whereas Chiwetel's got, uh, like, I'm not saying his voice is like James Earl Jones, but there was a lot of moments there where the timbre, I'll put it of his voice, or the way that his voice kind of flowed was very Mm -hmm. Mm Mufasa-esque. And I'm thinking, you know what? This would have been a weird thing for them to do, but if they would have cast him as Mufasa, I could see it much more than scar mm-hmm. um and i mean 
on top of that, yeah, they changed a bunch of stuff. They didn't have uh, be prepared like it was in the yeah, not in that fashion in the, in the movie. It was just very throwaway <clears throat> kind of thing. Uh, the hyenas, the hyenas scene, I thought because in the original there was only the three that were attacking the kids. Yeah, and Mufasa came and and saved them. Um, I felt the hyenas had no personality. Hmm. Like I, I didn't feel. I think is Aziz the weird one. I think so. Yeah. So he wasn't weird. He was just kind of annoying. Yeah. Um, and and the thing about his character, which scared me from the original, is that he's a very unsettling, unhinged character. Yeah. Whereas Whoopi Gold- Goldberg's character, Shenzi, Shenzi, yeah, that's who <coughs> Lupita Nyong'o played. Nope. That's you know who her? played her? Uh, I just looked at the IMDb. Oh. It was the Dora Milaje that in Civil War told black widow like to step away from the king and she, and he's oh really yeah oh, that was very random i know awesome though actually like, i actually wait, thought that, that was the from, i thought walking so dead? too but i, I it uh, wasn't isn't the girl from walking dead no that's no a, you're a thinking Koi. of that's um dan uh dan uh, guerrera Deny, that's it. Oh, so the other one in, like that movie she, one? she was a random in civil war that was about to fight scar uh, but like so the widow. other guard though because she was there she, she, was, okay, she yeah. was by the car and uh that's when black panther came as much as i would like to see that it's yeah around them uh, she but did good as Shenzi, I think. I, I think so, too. I just think they had all the hyenas around, and they just mm. took away from a lot of that thing that made the hyenas special. I, this is where they tried to go more. I think hyenas travel in those big groups. They travel so in packs, I for think sure. They had the yeah. three main, as we saw, no matter yeah. what. Yeah. But yes, they traveled in this larger group. So, yes, you had the rest of them, but their focus was these main three. For sure. So, I guess they were going for realism. So In, in some form yeah. or another. Um, like hyper realism at some points. For I sure. didn't like Rafiki. They, I. Uh, why were they close? Like they had such big close ups on him. What the fuck, man? Like show him. He's uh, such a prominent he, character. That okay? So okay, who's this? He's Rafiki, the, 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 the baboon. baboon. Okay, I was gonna say that's what I thought. I yeah. He had out. no. There was no passion out of him. There was no. no they, they even. They even went as far, as to change the dialogue. Yeah, on him. Uh, on him. They even went as far. Okay, so remember, do you remember much of the first one? Well, I saw it like recently enough. Okay, like, yeah, so you remember when Simba looks up at the sky after he sees Nala and they have the "Can you feel the air tonight?" Mm-hmm. scene, which I thought was very quickly done. Like, oh, it's very like that, she pinned okay. him. Oh, just Simba. Before, oh, we, Nala, uh. before we get into yeah, exactly yeah. that. There's no reason why she should know that Simba. He's dead. There seems There's to be right away that yeah. oh that's sad sad Simba oh you're Simba what happened and I and I know that in the oh. original was predicated on the pin down because that's a move that she had done that's a plan that right yeah. but I I watched the the clip of the from the original and I was just like there seems to be more, more of a hard. build up there and again way I think more hard there's I don't know how though I, I think it's a Beyonce they, effect no she's but, too she's too much I, I don't know hard. if it's that because I actually I felt. Helped. I felt Beyonce's voice was quite good for Nala. Um, I think it's the expression part of it. Because when you've got this flat face that just has a, a, a flat eyes or whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. that just has the mouth moving, scenes like that don't seem to translate well. And that scene in the original, way more expression, obviously, yeah. cartoons, right? So it's those things that... So if the thing ex- with Jungle Book that yeah. I think I've been able to put together, when you have Mowgli reacting to the world around him mm-hmm. we can feel that because yeah. that young boy did incredible work yeah whereas this everyone's reaction was very much the same except for when mufasa died and you saw simba and they did the pullback straight yeah. from from the from the original mm-hmm. so maybe that's why it felt like it lacked a lot maybe that's why it lacked a lot of heart because we can't, not that we can't relate to anybody, it's, it's not like that, like it, the original week, we, for some reason we could relate to it, but there was actually expression there that made them human, mm-hmm. that allowed us to connect with them more than literally just seeing animals parade around and act the way they do with, with very little expression. That's kind the, of the one idea that I tried I, I didn't to work out. pinpoint on the expression myself, I was more on, you rushed everything, You la- it, it kept lacking the heart, yeah. and you, the buildup was nothing. It's just like, oh, right away she knew. Well, like, and the interesting was, thing is... That part really bothered me, like, right away. Like, the interesting thing is, that's why Timon and Pumbaa are, are massive standout, e- standouts, even though I can, like, even as, because of his laugh, right? Seth Rogen's laugh is really yeah. hard to get away from. Um that's where I contradict myself because I'm thinking like, well, how can this meerkat and this warthog pull it off, right? Yeah. Like, well, how come I had some a little bit more emotion from them? Um, 
But I don't know why they me- they decided to change so many things from the uh, remember who you are scene uh, yeah. dialogue the the way it rolled out. He said, "Look closer." He didn't even do the look harder. Yeah. He didn't hit him over the head to say that, that the life past, lesson. Yeah, yeah, the oh. life lesson. The past does hurt, but if you, yeah, you either really? run from it, they yeah. took that out. He his whole staff. He didn't even break the the whatever yeah, it was no, open. Yeah. To run his thumb over to do the thing to Simba in the opening. Didn't they do that in the trailer though? Like, they did, they, saw, they like, made it a, an herb or something. It like was that. like this this herb thing that he crushed together. It's like he he grabbed a bunch of um oh, what's the one I'm, I'm forgetting what it is. Anyways, um yeah he just this herb that had this red kind of powder dust. He didn't do the break open. He didn't do the thing where he shakes his stick with yeah. the with the melons and the stuff on top of it. To like and then watch. Simba I actually play missed with that it. part because I was in line waiting for oh yeah you for did, drinks yeah. yeah. Um, and then he had his stick hidden underneath like it was this huge reveal that now he's going to go fight and use it, which he didn't even fight the way he did. He had it the entire time in the original. Yeah. And also the scene where Simba collapses and the dust from him sails through. Yeah. They literally showed this tuft of hair go for well, how long was it? Four, four and a half minutes of yeah, screen probably. time going through all the ways that it ended up to Rafiki to the point where it. Somehow landed on a tree. A giraffe ate it. This beetle rolled the the shit that it was stuck to. It's still in pristine condition, not marred by the shit yeah. that this giraffe passed through its body. Then got to Rafiki, and he's like, "Oh, the, like." And all the whole time, Rafiki was all in close up, and I don't understand why he didn't even do the something on a squish banana. Oh. Like he didn't do that part. There was I no there was no charm to it, and I think yeah. heart and charm. It felt like a heartless, charmless remake yeah. and 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 it was it in the original and i know i'm going on a tirade and i apologize uh <laughs> I, I just i the the movie the one thing i mentioned after this is where it really hurt me every time i watch this movie and as i mentioned previously in other episodes i've watched a lot i always cry in four scenes just automatically even if i don't want to <laughs> i tear up and i'm a, and it's so <laughs> weird and only one moment hit. The other ones, I could feel myself welling up. And we're talking an early moment is when it actually hit and I had a tear, not my usual seven or eight. I can feel everything welling up in these specific scenes because I can see it coming. And then all of a sudden, either a line of dialogue was said in weirdly, a scene was executed improperly. Um, I don't know what it was. But all of a sudden, just turned off. Mm-hmm. I didn't even get that. So for me, it was a lot of these moments that I'm ready to just like release and let go, and it just ended up just stopping. Yep. I, I was uh, my my emotions ended up freezing as they were coming up, and that really bothered me because I'm like trying to figure out why, and 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 then I realized why, and then I'm trying to figure out why do they make the changes that they make, and why do they do the things that they do. And I think the one thing that kind of the other one, Soph was really upset at. They didn't do the. What do you want me to do? Dress and drag and do the hula? Yeah, I was like, they did uh, the, be the, our guest. Like they did the guest. intro for be our guest, right? Yeah. Where he's like, if you're looking for a big hunk of juicy meat, uh, here's my friend uh, Pumba, Pumba, something to eat. And yeah. he's like, oh, are you aching? Yup, yup, yup. For some bacon. Yup, yup, yup. He's a big pig. You can be a big pig too. Oi! And then they draw the hyenas out. Yeah. This was just more like in the middle of nowhere, not in the same even spot. Yeah. And they just said B R, and then they just rush out. Even and before that, go for it. Nala just pieces out and just leaves him. She's like, oh, "I'm gonna go yeah. take care of this myself, like yeah. go Queen B style, whatever." Sure. Oh, they uh, did, they did a lot feminism. of that. Yeah, they did a lot of that. Bothered me so much. Um, she pieced out. Simba had his little revelation, and yep. then he ended up meeting saying, up with her, saying bye to Timon and Pumbaa. Number one, like saying I'm leaving, and he goes and passes her. He's like, "What are you coming?" This kind of thing. It's like. No, the whole point was for her to find out that he actually went back finally and stuff like that. Or yeah. Rafiki shows up at the time that the king has returned. Yeah. Even better. Like, you have a, a, a gold no gold line left moment. Yeah. Like, you have no reason to change any of this. this no. I would pay many times over to see this exact same thing in the live remake because of the technical ability that is now. And, like, I want to see that. But poor casting, poor dialogue. And lack of heart, and the really way they, they changed it, it too. Like even when uh, when Scar killed Mufasa, 
he just said your highness like it was or no what would he, what was the line long live the king he said it like oh, quick yeah. and not like, yeah, like menacing in his ear long li- like really because in the original oh. he goes long live the king and then he goes right yeah. where this one is like long live the king and then peace is out and then uh same with the revelation where he, he i don't even think he even had his revelation where he says i killed mufasa where well, because like, they Scar. never they never gave the opportunity for Simba to pin him down and say, "Tell him the truth." Exactly, which is a huge moment. Yeah, well, very huge. That's all speculation, right? At that point, oh, um, yeah. the other one is for some reason Beyonce had a huge rivalry with Shenzu, which they didn't even show. Shenzu, Shenzu sorry, I, I, and and then yeah, Beyonce had more lines than Simba, and she had the whole lioness's attack. Even though Simba got attacked by twelve hyenas, now you're, we're gonna wait for Queen Bee to tell us when to fucking go. Get the fuck out of here. Like, Linus's attack. Like, we already know that. We don't need you to tell us. This isn't Pokemon, okay? It was so dumb. And not only that, they devoted a good chunk of time to Nala fighting Shenzi, which never has been established that they had any previous major relationship that would matter enough for them to have revenge. And they took away the screen time from Simba. Mm -hmm. And then also, you don't see Simba for a while, and you're like, what the fuck is he up to? This is his story, by the way. Mm -hmm. And they gave it to that. The worst part is there was nothing ad- there was nothing happening before then to show. If they maybe changed some stuff and had had Shenzi really being shitty to Nala, like yep. really shitty, then I'd be like, I get that. That revenge is earned for screen time. Yeah. But they didn't do it. And they didn't have Zazu it being the nobody knows the trouble I see. Zazu was a bad t- terrible casting. Well. casting. Uh, John, John, John Oliver was terrible. He wasn't very good at all. They didn't even have the uh did you call him a pig? Oh, he called him a pig. Yeah, They're, yeah. Like they did this other. Oh, don't be a bully narrative. I don't like bullies. Yeah, yeah. I don't like bullies or whatever. Like you they, guys they had really gold. did some some really poor choices. Wow. My biggest one was the uh, look harder and the remember who you are part. Yeah. I thought that was that was for me unforgivable. The fact like you didn't have to change it. And also, this is a spoiler, but a stupid one. For some reason, Simba had to declare to the sky, my name is Simba, I am the son of Mufasa, and then go off. Come on. Game of Thrones style. So bad. It was so yeah. <laughs> it was so cheesy, and I'm sorry. Like I know you may have liked Childish Gambino as Simba. I felt there was nothing mm. there. I felt that his performance was, like, whereas Beyonce's was good, and I felt some passion in Beyonce's Nala. She, she was too much for me. I felt that Simba, I felt that Childish Gambino Simba had zero heart. He could care, he could give a shit to be here. That's, I, I that's, could see why, because that's his persona now about almost everything. Everything, yeah. He doesn't give a shit about anything because so, he is but who like, he is. How could you pass that where your character is just literally just giving the dialogue and when he wants to fluff around, like have his falsettos after the Kuna Matata part, yeah. which I was really looking forward to the ha ha ha, what he says. Yeah. They didn't even do that. They just had him riffing for a while and then having Timon and Pumbaa kind of make fun of him for like, oh, yeah. he's going to keep doing I, I this didn't, over and I, over. I, I like that they had you those kind of moments where like they they poke fun poke at fun stuff. Of, okay, yeah. And they like extended it. It's like, wow, he's really not going to stop. It's like, give it up already <laughs> kind of thing. So yeah. long um, story short, yeah. I don't know. Do you have any closing remarks? Well, one more scene that bothered me was actually the end scene where he finally goes up. Mm-hmm. It wasn't slow enough. Right. Way too fast. I did like how no close up, no yeah. slow down, no big rain. Wasn't it supposed to have the pause showing his pause kind of going yeah. up on Pride Rock as yeah. the rain was coming a full down? Slow down, close ups, all that jazz, and none of that. It was I, like I thought um, that the fight with Simba and Scar was exceptional. That was really good. And they I even had the bitch slapping. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it wasn't as pronounced, which no, I no, wish no. they would have done. That but, was really good though. But they even had the pause bitch slaps in there, like two of them. But it looked. Really good. Um, and aside from the fact that Scar didn't look like Scar, somebody had rendered it on YouTube how Scar should look like for a realistic version. I'm like, yeah. well, that looks fucking great. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, any closing things? Do you give it a no. score? Do you have anything there? Wait, for score? Before we get into that, because I have... Yeah, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you guys kept saying it was short. Yeah. I want to see because I was on Rotten Tomatoes. And I saw it was 110 minutes, which I thought is like crazy short it's for just, a movie. Just other, under two hours, yeah. 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 Then I looked to the original, see how long the original was to see if it was like that short yeah. too. Mm-hmm. And it's an hour 30. Hour 30 of gold. Yeah. Gold. The, so they put 20 minutes of nothing for mm-hmm. us, to be honest. I found that very yeah. odd. I don't know why. They 20 minutes that. of nothing. So mm-hmm. then also follow up, Rotten Tomatoes, like official like audience score is 89. The tomato meter though is 53%. Yeah. So like what would you rate it? Because I think fifty three percent sounds really low. Yeah, honestly, I'd probably it's a give pass, it. I guess I'd give it that high, that seventy five to eighty. 
You give it that high, hey? Only, only because, listen, it has, it doesn't have the same essence behind it, but I'm still seeing one of my f- top two Disney movies up on big screen. So that alone for me gives it to me, like I enjoy it enough. And like I said, there's just a few key things. Recasting some dialogue changes and put the exact damn thing again the same. Mm-hmm. It'd be a, a masterpiece on its own. This one is my favorite Disney movie. Um, original, obviously mm-hmm. not this one. Um, and it's in my top 10 of all time, favorite movies of all, like of all time, right? Um, I'm going to, for the reasons that you stated, I'm weighing them heavier than you weigh them. Yeah. Uh, so I would be more in that like 62, mm-hmm. like six, six out of 10, 62% mm-hmm. maybe, mm-hmm. um, even to like 50 to 62% in and around there. And, and a lot of it is, a lot of it is because of the technical, uh, achievement of the mm-hmm. film mm-hmm. and and then, and then some key voice acting but there uh, I, I just there were some parts there i think once you take away some of the things that really like that give it heart which i can understand is very hard to do with something that's hi- as hyper realistic as this so yeah. i'm giving it i say i would lean more towards that 62 percent okay. mm-hmm. i don't know why that in general is sticking but yeah that's what i give it okay mm-hmm. so that's our actually quite lengthy that was very lengthy ranking <laughs> I don't know about a Review. tangent there. <laughs> uh, oh, shit. We really went for it. Okay. Comic-Con. Yes. Let's get into the thing of what stood out for you the most. Okay, I'm going to be honest. Uh, Thor Love and Thunder is a stupid fucking title. You don't like it, hey? I hate it. Oh, man. I had a Masters of the Universe feel from the from oh. the thing. So I Or uh, what's the other one? Thundercats. Mm. had a Thundercats feel. If I remember correctly, that's the that's the way the logo is. Sorry, go ahead. So for Marvel, I assume we're only talking about Marvel because no one knows what the fucking. I didn't pay attention. Yeah, I didn't pay attention to anything else. Uh, <laughs> so let's see. What I'm most hyped for is Falcon and Winter Soldier. That's why my number one. Yep. Ooh. Then uh, Loki, just because it like follows the events. I think that's pretty interesting. After, like the the escaped Loki. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, Marvel. What if a lot of movies? I don't really give what a fuck. What is about. that? Yeah. What is that? Okay. I have no idea. So it's based off a comic series okay. that takes a bunch of like. Uh, what do you call it? Like I can like find because someone like Limitless AU posted like he has he had a post full of like examples, but it's essentially alter alternate universes and like scenarios. So hmm. that's actually pretty interesting. I'm actually really excited. Uh, let's see this one. Uh, he has a, like, not a whole list, but it's a couple good ones. Let's mm-hmm. see. Okay, so what if Loki had found the hammer of Thor? What if Spider Man joined Fantastic Four? What if Wolverine had killed the Hulk? What if Thor and the Avengers battled the gods? That's what it is. Mm-hmm. What if Spider-Man so it's like a mini series. It'll be on yeah. Disney Plus. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's a so mini series. Like, I think I believe it's just like it's like a series off. of unfortunate events, Marvel edition. <laughs> That's <laughs> really off. cool. Mm-hmm. I really like that. It's gonna be animated, so they can like really go fucking crazy with it and just do like whatever the fuck they wanted. Good for them. Yeah, no, I'm actually pretty hyped mm-hmm. for that one. Uh but yeah, Phase Four movies. Honestly, I don't really give a fuck about. <laughs> I don't well, know, Black it, Widow, I was very surprised the era they chose. And and I think the fan base called it. It was Taskmaster. Taskmaster I, I, is I the villain. I had no idea. I actually thought it was supposed to be a prequel, like her transitioning from uh, the Red Room the Red Room to Marvel, or the S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. <clears throat> well, so th- they, they had mentioned that it, it's going to show a lot of the, it's going incre- to it's gonna show more of the things that we saw in Age of Ultron mm-hmm. of the Red Room. Mm-hmm. So I can see it being like a Jason Bourne style movie, which I think is a smart way for them to go. Flashbacks. Where yeah. there is the flashbacks. Um, where she's know. trying to reconcile the pieces of her that leads her into, what is it? What did it say? Sorry. Between Civil War and Civil Infinity War. Civil War and Infinity War, yeah. So, so basically when she's like on the lamb and out of sight kind of thing. So. Yeah. That's We're she gonna, gonna be on the really... run with Captain America though. That's good. That's where I'm. Well, let's say they did curious. their own thing, kind of like as far as we know. After Civil War, Captain was hanging around in Wakanda, so right. that's maybe where she kind of did her own thing. But did she go to Russia because there's like David Harbor playing the Red Guardian, yeah. right? Named Alexi, which is very funny for Stranger Things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, like I assume he'd be in Russia. Yeah, 100%. my guess I, I is could... she's gonna go back yeah. there. If we're talking like right in between, they'll they'll probably do a lead up of what happened to her after Civil War because they, see she technically was on Team Iron Man, but she also helped Cap. Yeah, so she's kind of towed the line and was branded also a, a fugitive. Fugitivus, that. yes, fugitivus in Spartacus terms. Well, but the slate goes as follows: Black Widow, May first, twenty twenty; Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Fall twenty twenty; Eternals, twenty twenty. November 6th Shang Chi which is awesome because it's a Canadian actor uh, February 12th 2021 
Wanda and Vision. So the interesting thing about Wanda Maximoff is she's going to be both in the Doctor Strange movie, which is going to be horror, which I think is going to be really interesting. interesting right? And she's in the Wanda Vision movie. Yep. That's spring of 2021. Loki is spring of 2021. Mm-hmm. Doctor Strange is May 7th, 2021. The What If is summer 2021. Hawkeye, 2021. And Love and Thunder, which, again, I just looked it up. It's a, almost like a cross between He-Man, Master of the Universe, and Thundercats, but I had the Thundercats vibe, yeah. which I think is really funny. However, I don't care that she's coming back to play Jane Foster, yeah. like the, the female Thor. Female and, and, Thor has already always been set, though, like from all the comics for two years. No, 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 I know that, yeah. but I'm saying for, for the movie Yeah, it just here. doesn't seem like really... It seems it doesn't seem natural at all. She's been gone for like what since twenty fourteen, and it's always been this thing of like Good she doesn't she didn't like it or she wasn't happy with it. Well, yeah, and... I saw a meme. It was like from Spider Man when uh, JJ John Jameson like fires uh, Peter. Then Betty's like, "Wait, what the thing?" He's like, "Oh, you're back." It's like Kevin Feige's like, "Hey, you're fired." Then someone's like, "Oh, Thor, Thor Love and Thunder." It's like, "Oh, fuck yeah, come back here. You're rehired." <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, she like went out saying and she hated like. The people are saying that too. Where she, part. Like, yeah, well, she hated the Marvel universe. She's like, oh, I hate yeah. being a part of it. Blah blah blah. Even uh, Chris Biden Hemsworth, game. but yeah. Chris Hemsworth also was on the ropes of doing it again until Taika came in and pretty yeah. much rechanged it everything. Oh yeah, and the so, fact that the as long as Taika does, that's it. probably why she wants to come back. Or I, you know the paychecks that they get from doing that. Well, I don't. I don't know if she's doing anything. It doesn't say. Like, how, I don't know what she's done at all <laughs> except yeah. for Phantom Menace. I also said I forgot Blade, but I didn't say where exactly Blade's going to fit. I think fit. Blade is one of the last ones. I yeah. think Mahershala Ali is going to be an amazing Blade. I think he'll be good. I, I think thought he looked familiar. Then someone said the Netflix shows yeah. are yeah, he was pretty like, much not canon anymore. Oh, really? Well, someone was saying like they think it's not canon just because A, the movies never reference it, but they do mm. reference Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And like, oh, now yeah, they, those now they have like they, have, like they have the double actors. Yeah. Yeah, so it's one of those things where I think they could make it canon because I don't think anyone's gonna be like he's dead. I guess so They're, it doesn't really matter. But yeah. maybe he, can, maybe as he died, the vampire bit him and he's been played. I guess be a different guy. Well, time. he's a completely different guy. He just happens. Yeah, for yeah. sure. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I don't know. I'm pretty excited about. I that. I think that casting is. I unreal. do. I, I thought Wesley Sipes would be a good one, but he's apparently gone off the rails. So. He doesn't give a shit about no. anything. He didn't even give a shit on the third one. No, not really. But uh, yeah, Marshall Lee. But I hope like if it's a rated R film, that'll be. I don't know. Oh, it, like, it doesn't be. need to be like over the top bloody, but I feel like for that kind of thing, it can't be really like kid friendly. Yeah. I would highly it's recommend. It's on the Deadpool air range, yeah. I think. I think Blade and Deadpool would be an awesome little mix, but yeah. um, it's. I would highly, highly recommend people watch the first Blade, of course, and then Guillermo del Toro's Blade Two. Yeah. You can scrap Blade Three all you want. Uh, I would highly suggest you don't watch it. But Blade Two, I thought was really good, and Blade in general was really good. Um, yeah. What else have you guys all seen Far From Home yet? No, not oh, yet. I saw it, yeah. Oh, fuck, I want to talk now. I still haven't seen John Wick 3 yet. Oh, but I am. Oh, I am going to see Once Upon a Time in Hollywood Saturday. Ooh, wait, taking so. Out? Oh, it's out this weekend, and it's really? been getting real good reviews. I didn't even know that. I thought it was coming out, like, later, later. No, I had it in my calendar. Oh. <laughs> I have, like, literally Avengers Endgame and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood were the only ones that are in my calendar. Oh, and Lion King, sorry, were in my calendar. <laughs> um, But I still have to see John Wick and Spider-Man. Yes, fair enough. I hear, yeah, yeah, Thank John Wick for like, sure. I, I would say go see John Wick before Far From Home. No, oh, see Spider Man. Far no. From Home, you uh, John Wick, you can stream illegally in good quality now. Whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> whoa. Hey, I you said you could. I don't say he does. <laughs> um, well, I wanted to. I want to just bring up this Love and Thunder thing because they said that um, Valkyrie is the first bisexual hero. Whatever. Great. Whatever. I, um, I don't, I don't think it matters to be said. Let it happen. Just let her be. Just yeah. let it be like a fucking... Let her be, man. If she likes Vaj some days, if she likes um, penis the other day, then cool, cool. Let Just her, let let her it do happen. Thing, it doesn't man. have to be... Announced. Announced. Let yeah. people... Oh, cool. Uh, my, what it is. The thing I don't care about the Natalie Portman is the thing that we laid out. She just hasn't been around. Like, why am I going to be excited that a character that didn't care to be in the series anyways yeah and has kind of been a running well, joke in a sense she didn't like, even film her stuff for endgame actually was filmed pre already in the dark world oh yes that's true so she just i think she just lent her voice she might yeah that's the only thing she has she didn't have Maybe to actually that's what in. brought her back and it's like hey you know what i saw ragnarok it seemed like a lot of fun this seems like it's going to be more fun let's do this i, I think they had talks and said feige's like let's bring her into the fold she's a great she's overall a great actress for sure, but she is. She needs to be given more, just like how Chris Hemsworth wanted more. But I love, I love the title though. Love and Thunder, I think, like is it. an amazing he hates title. It. I'm, I'm indifferent. I really don't know. Like Love and Thunder. Okay, I guess so. I think it's gonna. It sounds like it sounds and looks like a a hair metal yeah. 
type of album. I don't know much about female Thor. Is she going to be... I know nothing about female is she Thor. Gonna, is, has it always been Jane Foster in the yes. comics? Yeah. Okay, so are they going to imbue her with some sort of power? Or like She's already had the ether. Um, so did that maybe? Body. So maybe that's something resembled came into there. But she's, I mean, just like Cap, he's worthy of what wielding Mjolnir. Therefore, he can summon a thunder regardless. Mm-hmm. But she's basically a nothing fighter. You know, it would have been hilarious if, as old, far as I know, if old Cap just grabbed Mjolnir as he was going into like wherever he was going after. Because they didn't show him after that. He just pieced the fuck out, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I thought that would have been funny. Yeah, I just don't care because the character doesn't matter to me. No. Like they haven't established anything that I care. But if it's uh, Taika's doing it, and Akira is the movie that he's putting on <laughs> not the back, well, Alita. not Alita, <laughs> uh, I, I think it's going to be good regardless. And she is a really good actress. I just maybe he was able to do, make Thor the most beloved character. Again, so they didn't have the best dialogue in those first two. There was no chemistry. I think that's the hard part. Did you that's ever find chemistry between the two of them? I remember what the fuck. I really remember very little about those movies. Yeah, they were very forgettable. Thor one, I do remember it quite. I'm thinking about like right now, like the kind of shield scene, to like, right as un, uh, to me too it's one of the more unforgettable ones but as well, like we said it's probably the most important because it's the first one that actually talks about infinity stones and sets the pace for everything yeah but even before uh with avengers mm-hmm. i would say it definitely does because yeah. thor one was the second marvel movie i saw in theaters i think it was, the was second. after iron man 2 correct yeah. Uh, I think it was before. Because I remember, I remember seeing Iron Man two first in theaters. Mm-hmm. I remember the donut scene, mm-hmm. and I know I saw Thor with Nick, and that's when we started going like all. The time. I yes, it was after Iron Man two because the end credit scene was the hammer in the oh, middle okay. of the field. You're right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I just um, yeah, I don't know. I th- I think uh, it should be good. It's Taika doing it. Most of these movies look really good. I'm super happy that they're going horror with Doctor Strange because I think they could really fuck some shit up. What are up. the Eternals, though? Like, you were excited. What is that? Yeah, you got I wasn't excited. I think we were just talking about where John Wick, or what's his nuts, uh, Keanu Reeves could potentially work in. But in the, oh, is, Const- uh, is so Constantine the, part of the, the Eternals? The Eternals are kind of like uh, what the game, the, what the Grandmaster is and mm-hmm. kind of that. They're kind of, actually, they're sentient, technically. Let me read but, it. But yeah, the Eternals are kind of like, Talk about the OG people in like the multiverses and like the other universes that they're not of... the Watchers, are they? Okay, no. Uh, the Eternals, Eternals are fictional species of humanity appearing in American comic book published by Marvel Comics. Yeah, they are described as an o- as an offshoot of the evolutionary process that created sentient life on Earth. There you go. Is there a picture of these people? Um, oh, okay, I've seen. Like, I've seen them. Like, so no, I think they got a solid cast going on. Do they have a cast already? Oh yeah. Oh. Um, it was another Jack Kirby project. Um, Members, oh, list of Eternals. It's not telling me. Zuras, Akaris, Chakaris. Yeah, I don't know. Wikipedia's failing me right now. It's not a reliable source. It's not a reliable source. But I think, I think the more cool things that they can add, the more that they can round out their whole thing. Well, it's like people are like mad, like, "Well, oh, this shit sucks." I'm like, I'm not like necessarily overly excited about it, but like, you can't have Avengers five already. Like, we gotta build up. And like build up their whole new universe because it's pretty much starting from nothing now. I think they never. I don't think they should ever have an Avengers ever again. They're gonna have a Young Avengers definitely. I don't think it should ever be called Avengers. I think it should just be called something else. I don't know what that title is gonna be. I honestly would not like. I'm not opposed to it, but like, it made two billion dollars. They're gonna have another. It's gonna be called Avengers. Well, I think that's so interesting, and I don't. I have no idea. I think a lot of it has to do with that original cast and how monumental it was. Like, I don't think it has the weight going forward. Um, that's why I'm kind of, I'm not entirely on your side for that reason. But yes, it made a shit ton of money. Mm-hmm. That's why Marvel's continuing mm-hmm. for sure. But I think the Avengers name is synonymous with the original six. Or at least Iron Man and Captain America, a.k.a. Chris Evans and Robert Downey mm-hmm. Jr. as those two characters. Like, I think there's something there. It's almost like what when a star draws in an audience, right? Like you put Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible, people are gonna go see it. So I don't know. I'm a little confused. I'm gonna like, I want to say right now, if Spider Man isn't the leader of the Avengers, <laughs> I honestly will. Like, I don't give a fuck about anyone else on that team to be the leader. You know what I don't understand? I was looking at the Google Play poster for Avengers Endgame, mm-hmm. and I kept looking at all the Endgame stuff. I don't know why they shoved. Captain Marvel and all the promo stuff and she was in there for all of four minutes I was like I, I thought about that a long time ago but I'm I'm going through it again because I'm like 
Why the fuck is she front and center and Rocket, let's say, is buried in the bottom corner? With, like, she did nothing. She contributed nothing. And she was in there for a very small amount of time. Why are you, like... Just a bigger draw for those just, people that, like... For those, like, hardcore Stuff like, like that that really that wanna, like, bothers up, me. Like, want to hear the Marvel. casting of Internals? Sure. Perhaps. So this is from uh, Comic <laughs> Book. And they have Angelina Jolie as Thena. Mm. Richard Madden. Oh, yeah. Who played uh, Rob Stark. Yeah. In the Game of Thrones series. As Love him. He was amazing in Bodyguard. Okay. Icarus. Sorry, there's like a little mm-hmm. covering here. Rob Stark is wide open. Kumail Nanjiani is Kango. Kango? I don't know who that is. Kango and Chain. Sounds great. Sama Hayek. <laughs> That's his spit up. Is it's a solo movie. That's stupid. Sama Hayek's in there. Angelina Jolie and Sama Hayek. Ajax. Shit. So I think they're they're actually changing some of the genders here. It seems like just based on the pictures alone. I assume there's not a big fan base that will give a shit. Yeah, maybe. Uh, Brian Tyree Henry. I have no idea. That is Fastos. Let me see him. Yeah, I don't know who that is. It'd be nice if they say you might remember him from. That's too much work. Whatever. It is ever clickbait. Should yep. also speak into the microphone. I'll do a little bit of both. Don <laughs> Lee is Gilgamesh. <laughs> really, I've heard that name. Here. Uh, Leah McCaw is Sprite. Cool. And I think <clears throat> speak, speaking of sprites. Oh, wait, do you have one more? Oh, wait, there's a couple more. Oh, uh, that's okay. Lauren Ridloff is Makari. Sure. And that's the last one, actually. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> so far, I've been watching Skin Wars on Netflix because they have them on there, and it's one like body painting competitions. Oh, okay. Ooh. You know who I think fucked up really big time in his life? John fucking Stamos. Because Rebecca Romaine is <laughs> the hostess oh, yeah. of Skin Wars. And Soph and I are watching because, like, first of all, the body paint is pretty incredible. It's an older show, right? But. Mm-hmm. God damn, man. Rebecca Romaine is just a goddess. Everything she wears. This is totally random, but I was thinking about it. And every time Soph and I are just sitting there and the beginning of the episode, she walks out in her outfit. Soph has a lady boner. I've got a man boner. And we're just like, we're not worthy. Neither of us are worthy. It has nothing to do with anything in the world. I just thought of it right now. But Anthony, you're going to let's close this out with uh, a topic you had. Oh, it's yes. almost unrelated to everything, but I oh, think great. it's an interesting topic nonetheless. So, well, this is kind of like a, I guess just in general, like how was high school in your experience? Like what were like the biggest problems? Yep. Like how was the culture? And I guess those are like kind of the two big ones. Because so those are like for me, I go on like how the culture was the biggest problem. So like I just want to see because you guys might be close. You guys are closer in high school, aren't you? We were like two years, two, two grade, years. two okay. Yeah, two years Two yeah. high school years apart. So yeah. if we had Nick, it'd be like more interesting because you have more like range. By it, oh, yeah. Nick's would be would super change. interesting. So I know, I just know for a fact though, like, even still ours will be very different because I just graduated this year. Yeah, and I just know like I, it was so stupid. But well, I tell me, guys. tell me your side so we have a, a, a okay. frame of reference. So this is like honestly, I was the the weird kid. Like I was like very sociable, but like not very social. Like I knew lots of people, mm-hmm. but I didn't like communicate with lots of people. And like lots of people knew me. But I like had a small group of like five friends. I actually like <clears throat> consider friends. Yeah. So the biggest problem at my high school was vaping in the fucking bathrooms. You could not walk in without seeing five kids at least vaping in there, just staring at you trying to piss. Most mm. uncomfortable thing. Especially when they're blowing out and you're taking a piss. That'd oh. be a weird image. Well, you know how where you know how, like stupid uh like our winters are? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so imagine just, you know, being in, you know, pants and a shirt in the bathroom, and then the fire alarm goes off because someone blew a fat cloud straight into the fire alarm. And you have to go outside for 15 minutes. Because some jack How many times off, that happen? Oh, my God. It happened three times in one week. Oh, shit. In one week, wow. three times. It was, oh, my. My guess is when Nick was in high school, they probably smoked regular cigarettes in the bathroom. That would be an interesting, you and Nick would have a very interesting breakdown. But yep. go ahead. Uh, then there was also another kid who... Uh, I don't. I think I wanted to do the story. The kid who stole my pants and pissed in them, and I caught I him. I remember that. So yeah. the same kid. Wow. Uh, he wanted to. Uh, he had a class in period five, which is yeah. end of the day for Canada. Period five. I know, like in states, have a bunch of periods, but period five is end of the day for Canada. Mm-hmm. And he will had a test that he wanted to skip so he could smoke weed. Instead of just leaving the class and not going, he decided to pull the fire alarm. Instead. And I was talking the other day, like the day after, a couple days after it happened. He's like, yeah, you know, learned a really valuable lesson. I'll never do that again. I'm like, oh, yeah, you know. So you learned a lot from that? Yeah. You know, it's like 900 bucks though, right, for pulling, a, for pulling a fire alarm. Yeah, you know, it's kind of expensive, but, you know, I'll still never do it again. I'm like, yeah. 
I would never do that ever in my life. I'm glad it took you $900 to fucking realize that. Wow. This kid seems like a real gem. This is all the kids there. Like, they are just so... Like, I feel there's something about his generation. Mine, I remember most of the kids in my age, like, mm-hmm. were fairly chill. Mm. We didn't have... We had, a, obviously, the there's a few people that are just shitheads yeah. like, fighting a lot. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of fighting in my age group. Like, mm-hmm. fights happening, like, near our school, near La Bolas. La Bolas and us had, like, one of the bigger rivalries. Yeah. There's a lot of... There was a lot of hate. Uh, there was the actually schools. a... We, there was a whole group of camel kids that stormed La Bullis because one kid was looking for another. I just went along for the ride. Huh. It's pretty funny. That'd be I, funny and though. then no one found him, obviously, and they went away. But during these fights, it was like just people would jump in and be like, well, that's just stupid. Let them fight it out. If they want to really fight it, it'd be dumb. Mm. But BK fights, yeah, those, no, are those are still going on. Did yeah. you guys have a lot of fights? Uh, Like really bad fights, like like it looked worse than WWE fucking fights. Like, they were just, well, the thing is, people don't know how, realistically oh, no, don't know. No, how to they fight. not at that age. No. Yeah, no. No, in general, I know if I got into a fight, if you took a snap, like if you took a video of what it looks like, I'd probably look like you just an idiot. Wild. Yeah, I know. But like in the I gym, you see fight. these kids yeah. like they don't know what to do in the gym. I'm like, no. I remember one yeah. kid tried talking shit to me. I'm like, you were squatting 2.5 pounds, man. Like, like get the fuck out of my oh, face. Oh wow, you like, flexed like the why? squat. Well, wait. <laughs> I can only imagine the culture now with these kids. Oh, it's like, awful. It's, it's got to be worse than when, even for you. Um, like, I mean, we're pretty close, but there's a, there's a different group of kids in that age group. A that really good are, quote my coach told me was that common sense isn't very common anymore. Yeah, yeah that's and a very, I see that every damn yeah. day. Well, <laughs> I think it's, I think there's a lack of conscientiousness and uh, a care for the person they around just don't you. Think. I think. Well, I, I think they think for themselves. It's not for the, the for the group. Um, which, whatever, that's, mine was different. Mine was really weird. I was, also, I was going through th- different things. So, like, I was a chubby kid going into grade nine. Oh, so was I. And, no, but then, like, I ended up dropping mm. a bunch of weight and then really going up there in weight. Like, muscle he was wise. there, muscle-wise. Okay. Yeah. Like, I think my squat was like 580. I've I think been my, a constant chubby kid for a while. It's just varying degrees. <laughs> yeah. So I had a bit of a transition with a it was it was very different when I was in school because I was I I knew a lot of people from a lot of different groups and I kind of mm-hmm. fit in a lot of them, but I never actually fit in with any of them mm-hmm. except for my friends from elementary school. Um yeah. And so it was interesting, like, and because I played rugby and a lot of the older guys played rugby, I kind of was hanging out with some people above my grade and then some people below my grade and then football and all that mm-hmm. stuff. But for me, it definitely changed when I started working out a lot. It was, but it, I don't know. I, I don't think we dealt with the same stuff that at least you're dealing with there because we never had um, transgender issues. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think we had one transgender student or two. And I, still, like, I feel like that'd be really I, high just back in those like not those well, they days, but hit, like, yeah. well, yeah. they might have hit it. But the thing was, it was never maybe because they were afraid uh, to come out uh, because they were the only two people. But we knew that they were right. So, but it was never a thing. Like no one made it a big issue. Even with the with the with the gay kids, mm-hmm. like it was never it never really seemed to be a thing. I don't under I don't know. Um, and and maybe because I was just oblivious to it, like maybe like maybe I just too, like I just went just through and I just wanted to like we worked out all the time. Our football team sucked, but our rugby team was great. I was in band. I was doing like a lot of drama stuff. I wasn't really keen on learning. I was more keen on like being a good athlete and all that. So it was a little bit different for me. So I, I don't yeah I don't know how to how it could compare. My I imagine that you probably had. Oh, and the teachers ruled the school. It wasn't the students ruling oh, yeah, the teachers. No. Oh, yeah. So I think that's a big issue right now that I'm hearing from not just teachers that I know, but from other teachers around mm-hmm. at least Canada and in the States where it's come to a point where it's the students, like the teachers are afraid of the students yep. for some reason, which I think is... Well, they could lose their job just like that. Yeah. which That's which, more of it, the fear that comes from not they're afraid of the kid. They're afraid this right. dumbass just says one stupid thing. For sure. I'm on my ass. But the knife, the, the the person wielding the knife is like the knife's going to kill you. It's not the person wielding the knife. So yeah. these kids are wielding knives and going around mm-hmm. and just looking for a reason. And a lot of it is, unfortunately, a lot of these uh, people are either quitting or losing their jobs because mm-hmm. the kid has, they just want to exact whatever revenge they want. Let's say they got a bad grade and then they want to yeah. pull some shit. Like they're, they're a lot, it seems like they're a lot bolder right now. Yeah. Um, 
and I think it's indicative of of a culture. What's funny is a an exclusive culture that's propagating inclusivity, mm. and it's so uh, it's so weird how ironic in ass backwards the ideology is and. I'm guessing, based on your nodding, that it's something like that. So, yeah, from my experience, uh, there was very few teachers that actually, like, I respected. Like, I, I wasn't ever disrespectful to teachers. I was just obviously, mm-hmm. like, my sarcastic self. Or, like, a lot of yeah. them found that, like, funny enough where I was just kind of, like, you know, just, like, making those comments. I wasn't ever, like, pushing a line where I'd go and, like, make someone feel uncomfortable with shit. Yeah. But, like, lots of students, they would, like, I remember my cap teacher, like, my homeroom teacher, like uh, our students just did not respect him, hmm. and it was kind of like because he was like one of our friends, right? That's how people viewed him. Yeah. But like if he was like he was like a really bad day one day, and I could tell, and everyone could tell, and some guy wanted to like, I don't know what he was gonna do, but I know he's bald, so like they always did that joke, right? And he just wasn't having it, and we're like, you know, man, just like calm the fuck down, like read the room, like don't do this shit. Like they just don't have a filter. They don't have compassion. I think no. I think yeah, a lot of it comes down to compassion. And that's yeah. I was reading an article based on like back when you guys were like in high school and going to college. Like, college was when you were just kind of like hooked up and did all that crap but like mm-hmm. now in today's generation like it's just hookup culture like no matter what like no yeah. one knows how to be in a relationship which is weird because i'm like the communication's way. gone out the door yeah exactly like that's <laughs> well i th- i think i think communication is one but i think articulation is one i know i struggle yeah. with articulation like because we communicate all the time and a lot of times when i think back on the episode i'm like oh i could have said this better i could have said that better yeah we know what a lot of people know what to say, but I think if passions start getting involved, then they don't articulate it properly. And I think that's what happens when people end up reverting back to um, a more aggressive tone, which ends up kind of dismantling any type of even base communication you can yeah. have. But I think a lot of times is is this like before and by before, I mean like two months ago i would have been like oh your generation is garbage or your generation is garbage or whoever's Mm -hmm. i just feel like more kids are lost and and, um it's proven that not just students but even little kids right they need structure they need structure and they need order they need to learn the rules they need to learn empathy they learn empathy by playing let's say or play fighting but learning how far they can go right because then that establishes a, a basic thing of okay if i yeah. poke you in the eye that's not good but i can maybe like move your head with my hand and it's fine right it's part of the play thing right yeah and it just seems like a lot of that and, and, and i don't i might not be articulating this myself but it just seems like a lot of people are lost and and they're just coming yeah. up with their own rules because i don't know maybe they feel disenfranchised they feel like this whole world is predicated on this patriarchy or whatever and which i don't really subscribe to mm-hmm. Um, but I, I can understand how someone feels that way. So we had rebels in high school. Always. We had the smokers corner, right? Yeah. And they were always the ones that were outside and they wore, they always wore the same Nirvana shirt or system of a down shirt all the time. They had the big black baggy boot, pants, like baggy yeah. pants that were massive with yeah, the chains so and everything. Oh, wow. But I mean, even them, I remember a few of them. They were just, they, they were, they were playing it off of rebellious, like nature, but yeah. It, just seemed like they were maybe to me, maybe because I was a dumbass, but they just seemed like a little bit smarter, and they and they they almost felt like they were coming from uh, a more intelligent ideal. But at the same time, I knew a bunch of emo kids that listened to bad emo music that were super loaded, like their families were rich and all that stuff, and they were going through some shit. Like, yeah, we're talking like I knew a few of them that were cutting themselves, yeah, no. and so it just seems like everyone's just getting more and more lost, and. Do you feel that you feel like this past four years or whatever that you felt that people were just getting lost and not knowing what to do? So then they just reacted to things. Mm-hmm. Well, I feel like I so for my high school experience, I kept a woman out of the equation yeah. for almost the entire thing where I like even realized like now I'm like, OK, like I should have been like more open just to, like do like just like because to make it more interesting. Mm-hmm. So I feel like lots of kids did get lost and lots of kids just are handed everything and they don't actually have the ability to work for things and they don't understand how to do things themselves. Oh, that's just constant no matter mm-hmm. what. <laughs> or so, no, maybe they don't want to. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Like, it's just one of those things where like lots of people get lost and they just turn to like bad things, like mm-hmm. hard drugs. Not even just like weed. Like kids were doing cocaine. It's like, what the fuck are you doing? Dude, meth is massive right now. Yeah. Between here and Saskatoon, meth is the number one wow. drug and it's fucking insane. No, it's like, now I've, with I always say this. I'm like, <laughs> oh, I've never heard a single story 
ever go, I'm glad I did cocaine. And how you get to your point in your life where you're like, you know what? I'm going to try this. There's it always a few that. schools. Oh, I almost that... did. I was at a I was at a rave. The Swedish House Mafia was playing in L.A. And uh, I remember turning around and I like we were we were super wasted. And then the like, turn around and goes, hey, man, we got some stuff to sell. It's like, oh, what do you got? Right. We're asking. He's like, well, all I have is cocaine. And for a split, and the one guy that I was with, he has he had done it before, and he looked at me, and I was like super curious at the time, and he's like, he he's done it in the past, and he just looks at me, he's like, if it was just you and me, I would say yes, but because we're with these other guys, no, and so we just didn't do it. I was so mm-hmm. close. I had the money in hand. We almost did the exchange, and wow. thank God for him because I have an addiction. Doing it, I don't know, kind of. Because the thing is, is he's explained it as it's such a quick, it's such a quick high and it's such a short fuse that you want to get back to that all the time. Yep. But he's like, the hard part is every time I did it after, I never, ever reached that first time I did it. Yeah. So he's like, it's, it's really shitty for your mind because you're constantly chasing something that you're trying to achieve and you haven't done it yet. So one thing to that, I was talking with my friend is like, it'd just be great if drugs had no repercussions Mm -hmm. just to like just try it once and like nothing bad will happen out of it like you won't get like addicted for life and like your whole life goes to hell like i could understand that point of being curious but for me like just like what if i have a problem one thing i did a lot was his workout like i was a very angry child in school where i was just like always like fucking fuming like Mm. everybody just pissed me off that was your outlet yeah and i was just silent i just go and i just work out and i would just fucking go heavy and that that was fine after it was like therapy that's a that is the best bigger. one. Mm-hmm. Well, it was just I fucking gave up. <laughs> no, like, but what you did was you were, you were able to you were able to manifest your mm-hmm. anger and then put it towards something extremely useful and healthy mm-hmm. for you. You know, that's a very important thing. And I think for the majority of the people, I don't know if you've dealt with this, but you don't know where to harness all of that. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't know where to harness all of that that anger or that confusion or whatever, and. You know, you did, I think you did the right thing. Obviously, you did the right thing as opposed to just freaking out all over the place. But some people just don't want to work out, for instance, right? But I think you did the right thing as converting that. You realize that. And I think a self-awareness is a big thing. Mm -hmm. And I don't, and I think if you don't realize when something's happening, and that takes a lot of time, I'm just learning it now. So I was talking to Soph today. She's like, you haven't been nearly as angry as you used to be. That's very true. You can listen to it in the podcast. You can figure out when it stops. (laughs) Sure, yeah. And, And and it has nothing to do like I still have the same ideals. I'm just finding better. I'm working on finding better ways to articulate it. And I've learned to catch it as it's bubbling up. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I imagine six months ago, my Lion King review would probably have been very different. Right. Even my Captain Marvel review, mm-hmm. I would still say the exact same things. It would just be in a different tone that maybe received a little bit better. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of youth, and maybe you've seen this, maybe you don't, but it's just they're not sure what to do with all their energy, all the information that they're getting, um, the overload that they're putting on themselves, everything. There's mm-hmm. so much going on, and they're just having a tough time reacting to that. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. That's my... One last thing is, like, when you said, like, feeling lost, like, as I was saying, like, kept girls out of the equation, and, like, prom was coming up, so I'm like, okay, like, I want to take someone to prom. So, like, without getting through the whole story, like, I took someone to prom, and we were kind of, like, a thing for a while, but it started just getting, like, I noticed, like, even my friends knows, like, you're, like, turning, like, really, like, bad. Like, not, like, bad personally, just, like, bad state of mind all the time, just because, like, uh, she was playing a lot of mind games. That's and just not healthy. couldn't communicate properly, and it was just, like, driving me, like, insane, like, where I would, like, just remember, like, I was always angry, always just kind of, like, in a depressed state. And then after prom, I kind of had enough. And, like, I realized it was one of the hardest things I've ever done so far. But, I'm like, you need to cut toxic people out of your fucking life. Mm-hmm. So, I did it. And it's actually, I think, a month today. Mm-hmm. And I've been just happier. It's, like, peaceful. Like, it's really boring. <laughs> but it's just, like, one of those things where, like, a lot of people, I think, get caught up in social media, which is a really thing. Like, That's yeah. super a dangerous. A YouTuber named Etika, like, killed himself based off social media. And he said, Jesus. be careful with social media. Like, don't get trapped like I did. And it's one of those things where, like... Entertain Facts was cool, but I didn't actually get, like, super, like, I wasn't, like, yeah, well, fuck you, I have 78,000 followers. I wasn't, like, really big of myself. I was kind of just posting, and that was it. But lots of people... your chip kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Lots of people are, like, into Snapchat. Like, all they do is Snapchat. All they do is, like, Instagram. And, like, yeah. you just had to realize there's lots of toxic people, and you have to kind of, like... Your, your age groups is, is kind of already, not screwed, but they are mm-hmm. they have a disadvantage having been through that. Yeah. We very 
little exposure Very to that kind of stuff. Little. Mm-hmm. Facebook was just rolling out. Mm-hmm. MSN was... I that think, was 2007. MSN was uh, 2004? But MSN was still a thing during high school even for me. Yeah, it I was. I think, yeah, like 2007 was my grade 11 year. Yeah. And so that's when it just started. Still didn't have the, the wheels to keep it going. And then probably 2008, it only took a year, yeah. realistically. But... For that, two thousand eight was on his really. But even like, then, it wasn't yeah. as it, it wasn't as intuitive as it is now. It wasn't as like you can't don't have a, that much access to whatever. Mm-hmm. It was just another form of messaging. Well, it talking. wasn't embedded in the culture. It exactly, wasn't yeah. a framework of the nope. way that our whole world is structured. Same with Twitter. Mm-hmm. Same yeah, with no. Google. In so general, that's actually where you, your age group. I want to say generation because they consider us all the same generation. But your age yeah. group, mm-hmm. uh, we're, we're close. Dis- yeah, we're in that. So have that have that disadvantage, I guess, to have to deal with this kind of thing and adapt to that. We didn't have to worry about it too much until we were already a little bit more mature and like mm-hmm. had, could deal with it in our own way or just not mm-hmm. get sucked into it. Right. Well, I think the most important thing is we <clears throat> never quantified ourselves based on how many hearts we were getting or likes yeah. we were getting. No, um, I think what's what, what most people are finding. Um, or what most psychologists, sorry, uh, are finding is that people are quantifying their lives. And I've did it for a time. Um, I got caught up in it. Right. I even asked today, how come, how come we didn't get likes? Right. We had 12 last time, 15, and we'd only had four this time. Right. When you're embedded in that, I think, and maybe you've probably seen it from a lot of people that, oh, I didn't get this many likes and they're actually heard about it. Mm -hmm. Right. I worry about that for this podcast, how many listens we get when we do a drop for sure. But that's because I'm worried, okay, how do we make a better, how we make better content, how we do all that. Mm-hmm. But it's the same fucking thing, right? However, I don't quantify my life based on a scale of I've got this many likes on this post and this on the other. And it's a very, very dangerous game because then you're boiling your, for the hyper rationalists, it might seem great because they're looking at it as like, oh, you can boil your worth based on numbers. Mm-hmm. You know, you're worth a thousand likes. That's how much your world is worth, right? Whereas it's super dangerous because once you deviate from that, I th- that's when people get off the rails and then, uh, you know, you get thrust outwards outside of that safety net. Mm-hmm. And is that, I-, I think that's where it's the most dangerous thing because people are devaluing themselves by valuing themselves based on those likes and hearts. Well, just like the problem with this generation is that they get really addicted to things really easily. Mm-hmm. So they're addicted to their phones. Uh, I know, which is stupid, but there are kids in elementary school addicted to nicotine and vapes and shit. And it's like, are you serious? Like that was yeah. what five years ago? Vapes? I didn't know what the you fuck know what? Vapes I'm were. so pissed because they 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 got rid of like prime time like cigarellos. They had like the flavor and that and was menthol. Their big, that was their biggest problem. The flavored. Mm-hmm. Cigarellos, mm-hmm. not cigarettes, cigarellos. And now the vape thing is like, oh, that's fine. No problem. Well, actually, in the States, they're trying to fight it and they're like having a. Uh, to get rid of it? To yeah, it to get rid of like. To oh, get rid really? of flavors like Tutti Fruity because they say there's no reason why you should have a flavor like Tutti Fruity if you're not trying to market to kids. Bring back the fucking Kinder Surprise. Stop bitching about Tutti Fruity cigarettes. But it's true because that's how a lot of kids get into vapes just oh, because, well, cotton candy. But it's like, if you're. That, like, yes. If I would never give my sister who is in grade seven, a vape to try. if Because I'm not stupid. Yeah, well, who are the parents? Exactly. No, the parents are so stupid. I'm sorry if you're listening to this. You're stupid. My they parents... do whatever. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, I, I think it's a, God. I, I think it's the same thing as the, the teachers, where oh, it's yeah. these young people that are ruling the roost. And, and at one point, it gets exhausting because mm-hmm. neither of us are parents. I couldn't even think about taking care of a dog at this point, let alone a child, especially an adolescent one that's dealing with what they but might I've be gone with. to a party and the parents were serving jello shots to kids. That is a, and it's that is like, illegal. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. I'm like, if my mom was in the same situation, like I couldn't even imagine. I'm like, I would get my ass kicked for even like saying, hey, can I throw a party here? Yeah. You threw a party here once. I did. Remember that? And I tried. I fucking went to town on this girl, and by town I mean I not sexually. Okay. She stole. <laughs> she stole a bottle of wine. Yeah. She stole a couple that bottles was of wine. That was a small little get together house. Yeah, that was it was, small it was a small get together. Yeah. She jacked this wine, and I fucking went good fellas on her to the point where she brought it back, and we threw it out right after because yeah. I don't know, like yeah. she fucking in, injected something. I was not having it. I was yeah. so pissed. Yeah. Just yeah. Well, that really went from love and thunder to. Sadness and rain. Um, it's our society. Yeah, I guess so. I just, I guess the 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 moral of that story. I just don't. Just 
if you stop quantifying quantifying your l- life um, with arbitrary um, with arbitrary goals or ideals, I guess if you want to use hearts or likes or whatever based on the social media account of your choosing, uh, just don't do it. It's it's a super dangerous game. It's it's just as addicting as anything else right now. They're actually you know it's an actual addiction that people are suffering from. And it's not fair because guess what? You can you're as cheesy as it sounds, and this is really not part of me. You're definitely worth more than that, and you're actually devaluing yourself based on that. So, um, I think that's a pretty good and spot to wrap it up. Kind. I think awesome. be kind to other people and be there. Don't don't try to force tolerance. Just be tolerant. Mm-hmm. Just don't give a shit. That's nope. how I live my life. That's why my parents hate it. They're like. You just don't give a shit about anything. Like, yeah, and I am happy. Just do your own thing. Just don't care. Yeah, that's it. Anything else, gentlemen? Nothing for me. No. Congratulations again to Avengers. And also, big ups to James Cameron for that cool post of Iron Man in Pandora. I thought that was really dope. That was really good. That's a classy, class act move. Actually, all of the box office kind of back and forth, hey, good Mm -hmm. job, good job stuff has been super creative, super respectful. Um, Avatar had a massive, massive run for over ten years. So, and also like, that we is released no- in theater. So, I don't know why this argument's even a thing. But yeah, it's true. We released and it himself. released in December before Star Wars took over December. So that's a really big. That's a good way to bump up yeah. those numbers. Um, but anyways, if if I'm correct, and I like to think that I am sometimes, Avengers Endgame will be the number one movie in the box office forever, um, unless the entire game changes to where the box office 40. is then. So got to do with the rest of the avatars. Okay, yeah. no man. Like name, <laughs> name a single character from Avatar. Name a single character. Uh, Navi. And also people can. No, that's that's, why. that's what they are. The, uh, the Navi. Oh are yeah, the name race. a character. You name the race. Uh, yeah. Nateri. All right, that's it. I don't know if it's right. Zoe or Zoe no, his character in the theory. Uh, that's it. That's it. That's all. Uh, thank you again to everybody who's listening right now. Thank you so much for your support over the year we've been on Anchor, or a little bit over a year. Um. Wherever you're listening from, I hope you're having a great day, great week, great weekend. Um, sorry, I'm going through. I'm trying to find that fucking list of stuff. Whether you're listening to us on Anchor, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Breaker, CastBox, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Podbean, Radio Public, and or YouTube, thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate every single time. And if you do have an option to comment or like on any of those platforms, please do so. If you feel like it, if you don't, then it's all good. Find me on Twitter at the F G. You can email us at the F Word Podcast at gmail.com. You can find me on uh, can find us on Instagram at the F Word Podcast on Facebook at the same name. And make sure you're following the lazy Canadian dots in between the dot lazy dot Canadian on Instagram as well. And uh that's it. That's all I got, gentlemen. It's your boy, Anthony. It's Bass. And I'm G, and we are out. <laughs>